How awesome is this? I can't believe I get paid to... Wait, I'm not getting paid to do this. That's all right. We'll, talk, we'll figure out something later. Come um, on my room later. Lance, somebody please give Lance a microphone. I, I really, really, really wanted to ask, ask Lance to do the thing with the knife. <laughs> but security confiscated it on the way in, so you're all going to... I think everyone has dodged a bullet here today for that reason. This guy's got one right in front of you right here. Oh, God. But I'm not going to do it. I'm why not did you it. have to point that out? <laughs> I'll do it with the microphone. Lance, well, you actually told me last night for a long time after the movie came out, that's pretty much all you got. Like, like waiters, when they bring you food, would like hand you the knife and say, would you do it? Like, what the hell? That was actually a thing that you put up with for a long time. Very long and time. even now, it's, even until today. My, my favorite one is a cop pulling me over for speeding. And he, and he said, do you know how fast you were going? I rolled the window down, you know. And he, and he went, Bishop. <laughs> And he said, he said, just don't do it in front of me. And he let me go. <laughs> you said, well, you actually, you practiced, right? You picked out a whole bunch of knives and you actually got pretty good doing it, for real. Well, when, knowing Jim Cameron, I didn't know what knife he would pick. You know, because he, he, we did it on the phone a month before I went to London to shoot. And I, and I, got, I got them all, switch blades, you know, every kind that opened, throwing knives and all of that. And when I got to London, my suitcase, was full of knives, and the customs opened it, and he, <laughs> he said to me, well, yeah, step back away from your suitcase, please, because the IRA was active back in those days, and that's quite a while ago, isn't it? Yeah. But anyway, uh, they almost arrested me, and Fox had to come down and get me out, because they, I said, I'm just an actor, man. I'm trying to practice with these things. <laughs> but anyhow, he picked the throwing knife, the same one you got right there. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. Randy, I want to ask you first, like, how, how does all this start? Like, I know it's one thing to, to sit around and dream of, of writing a, a sequel to Aliens. It's, it's easy enough to fantasize about it. We've all done it. But like, how, do, how do you go from that to actually starting the ball rolling on something like this? When we had finished our first Brothers in Arms game, Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30, I'm not sure if any of you guys uh, played that game. After we, thanks, um, thanks, <laughs> all right. Uh, after we finished that game, you know, it sold really well. It did like 3.5 million units uh, out of the gate and uh, great reviews, right? Huge critical acclaim. So we found ourselves in this position where, okay, what are we gonna do next? Well, we love that, so obviously we're gonna do more of that. But we also decided to try two other things to use our credibility to create a new brand, but also to see if we can get someone that has one of our favorite brands of all times to trust us and, and create a game with that brand. So the original thing became Borderlands, and the other thing is Aliens Colonial Marines. And uh, it actually began, we actually attacked it from the talent side. And you're gonna get some water, you're thirsty. We attacked it from the talent side, and I should actually hand the mic to Brian because he sat down with Ridley Scott in... I've never heard that story. You should, Brian, you should tell that story. Right. <laughs> so yeah, we were at uh, E3, and uh, we were uh, going to visit with uh, Ridley Scott to talk about a, a game possibility of uh, doing a Blade Runner game, which uh, we, didn't, we weren't able to do, but, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was a really just a, an amazing opportunity to kind of sit down and talk about what are we doing in Blade Runner. Uh, and he said, well, and we just started talking about how we liked, you know, Alien. And uh, he said, well, you know, I've got my, my storyboard. So he went and had somebody go get them and bring them out. And they're all dusty and uh, blows the dust off, z unzips them, opens them up, and kind of goes through a bunch of these. And a lot of the things that we saw in Prometheus, he started kind of talking about what he wanted to do with different uh, – you know, different areas of the movie, uh, going to the jockey room and all that kind of stuff and talking about how he was thinking about the, the whole ship as sort of a, a bomber of, you know, kind of something that was going to be able to have, uh, you know, basically be, be a weaponized, you know, vehicle and those kind of things. And so he just kind of went through the whole movie with us uh, while talking about what he was thinking about with this stuff. And so it was just, you know, kind of got us really excited to, to continue on with the franchise and see if we could do something with Aliens. You know, I, I'll never forgive you because... Uh, Brian didn't tell me he had the meeting until after it was over. So I wasn't there. This dude's sitting down with Ridley Scott. You know, and Ridley draws his own storyboards. He's an artist. He's an industrial designer. And this dude's, like, sitting down with him, going over all this stuff, learning the secrets of the space jockey. And I'm, like, sitting in my hotel room. Like, you're a jerk, dude. <laughs> like, how did you not invite me to that? 
<laughs> so let me ask you this, like, from, so from a creative standpoint, I mean, it seems like almost in a way Alien 3 kind of left you with a big opportunity because the direction they went with Alien 3, obviously following Ripley and Newt, they, they went, that, and went to that direction, went to a new location, but left the Sulaco and the LV 426 and all that stuff untouched. So what, do, you, do you just kind of sit down and like pick over the movie and start figuring out like what thread, what strands you can start you know, pulling on? So the, the fantasy that we had, the itch that needed to be scratched, there's two kind of itches uh, that I think anyone who's seen Aliens... No, I don't want to know about your itches. <laughs> you do. <laughs> anyone who's seen Aliens shares these itches. And here's, the, here's what they are. The first one is there was some story that you felt like was supposed to happen after Aliens. Alien 3 was not it. Now, Alien 3 was a good film, especially if you take it as a standalone piece. It was David Fincher's first film. But what we wished for, once we understood that the universe was larger, that there were colonial marines in this universe, uh, once we understood all of that and we were introduced to these, these characters, there was, a, there was a story we all wished for. There was an experience that was a bigger, wider experience that we all wished for. And uh, we never got that. So that's one itch that, that we wanted to scratch. The other is, um, as in the video game medium, the opportunity is to become a character in the movies. The, the opportunity is to be a hero uh, in, in, the, in these places. We want to become one of these colonial marines. Like, look at, look at this. Dude, you got to stand up and show off your rig, dude. This is look a at pretty this cool Drake right like, here. Look at this. He's got a, a legit smart gun. Like, so that is very cool. He's done in real life what I fantasized about. And we about got a dropship pilot the, right here. Yeah, as well. look at the, yeah, check this out. Death from above on his helmet. Like, these guys are living the dream that the movies created for us. <laughs> like well, the original Bishop, when you when James Cameron says to you and says well, you're going to play this android, and how do you, how do you get into a role like that? I love I always love the fact that you had that very subtle like you were a little bit twitchy, and there was just this kind of very subtle sense that you weren't quite human. I thought that was always great. How do you how do you get into well, a role like that? You know you know what happened. I wanted to play because I'm a full grown adult. I wanted to play him like with an emotional life of a. 12 year old, very innocent character, in, in the sense that he cared that if you treat me bad, I'm going to outlive you. I had my, uh, my hair got colored uh, a kind of a plum color because I knew that under light it would look like copper. And I, and I just, I didn't want to tip it that I was an android. I just wanted to, or an artificial person, uh, or whatever you want to call it, synthetic, whatever you guys prefer. But I, I wanted something to be off, and you didn't know what it was quite. Did, did you have any inclination, you know, you're working with Sigourney Weaver, you know, and you can tell probably when you're shooting that, you know, Bill Paxton's kind of stealing the show, you know, uh, and, and of the Colonial Marines, it's arguable that Michael Bean's character, Hicks, is the hero of the Colonial Marines. It turns out, though, because of your character, the way you portrayed it, and the nature of the character, you're, 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 the, you're the one that's actually lived the longest. Like, we're still doing material using <laughs> The bishop character. Did it? Did it occur to you when you were shooting that that was going to be the case? Of course. <laughs> no, no, I didn't know that at all. I, I, I swear, we were so gung ho about doing this movie that n nobody was thinking that way. Yeah. They really weren't. I mean, Sigourney, we knew, we knew what was going to happen with her. She did a great job, and and we all devoted to her. Yeah. She and she was really pretty. I mean, if you know what I mean. You know, <laughs> you know, it was a, we we all got our we got our eye candy all day long. It was great, but but besides that, uh, we, we kind of knew that. I, I'll tell you something. Any Marines in here that are active duty in there right now? No. That's really interesting. Uh, I've been to some conventions, and so many young Marines have come up to me and said, "When I was a kid, I saw aliens, and that's what made me join the Marines." And they're active duty guys. And I'm telling you, at least 20 of them over the last year. Isn't that something? I mean, because of the camaraderie of the, in, the, uh, in the story, in the show. Since you mentioned it, there is actually a Wounded Warrior booth here at Comic-Con, which you should go and check out. I'll go check them out. Yeah, yeah maybe we we'll all go check them out. Say, absolutely. Hey guys, say hello, <laughs> when Lance you know? Hendrickson invites you somewhere, you go. So, I would, uh, before we get back to the game, Lance, I want to just uh, ask you for one more story because th I, you've got a million and I love them all. But last night you told me, because I always wanted to know this, and I'm I know you must get sick of being asked these questions, but I just had to know what that android fluid really was. And you, and you told me what it was. The kind of the, the, the gross kind of white milky stuff that leaks out, leaks out of androids? Yeah, it, you know, it, it, all of the intestines and everything that you're seeing, you know, was silicone. And it was a very toxic smelling stuff. It looks good, but it smells bad. <laughs> no, 
But anyway, they, the, they mixed cream and yogurt together and then had me, you know, getting mouthfuls of that over and over and over again. And they left it out for a while, right? They left it out overnight once. <laughs> and I got so sick from it, man, between the smell of the, in the intestines and the yogurt bad and everything. But I, I, Bishop doesn't complain. <laughs> so I just did it. I mean, and I got sick. I'd go, you know, we shot that for a week. That was a, that was a, a tough scene. Just segue yeah. off that. Um, I'm going to name drop some of the other people we, we got to work with. Because um, it wasn't just Lance. Lance was definitely the most fun to work with. But I got to work with uh, Mark Ralston, who played Drake. Um, he's in multiplayer. And he had, he had a fantastic story. Because the guys. And Drake is the guy that has the huge yes, gun. If you yes, 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 yes. Uh, but yeah, Mark was really super nice. He would just sit there talking about doing The Departed with Scorsese as if he was talking about eating waffles. Um, but he was talking about uh, uh, the, when he got the acid burn and how awful that was because it, when it mixed together to do that, that steam, uh, he couldn't breathe. And then I guess, I guess somebody, it might have been Jim was off camera just being like, just a little longer, just a little longer. And he literally couldn't breathe. He was just holding his breath for like a minute, minute and a half or something. I thought that was really interesting because apparently that was really dangerous and they should not have done it. <laughs> and you, know, uh, you know what it is? It's A and B. There's two things. They first put spray yeah. this A yep. on you and then they say, are you ready? Yep. Then, yep. Okay, yep. Yep. roll them. And then here comes the B. And the minute the B hits it, it's smoking with this oh. acidic, you know, I mean, man. What a B. And, uh, oh, and in terms of other characters from the original movie, Hicks yeah. and Apone are both in the yeah, game yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Apone, the guy that plays Apone, I guess, lives in a cottage in the middle of nowhere in Spain. Um, so he was fun to track down. And then, yeah, I got to, I got to work with Michael Bean as well, which was a trip. Um, I will yeah, applaud me. No, uh, don't. <laughs> But uh, Michael Bean was was cool because he's not he's not just in multiplayer as Hicks as the as the pre-order bonus. He's also in the campaign in some way. We'll say, I think it's pretty clever how we how we fit that in. I won't say anything else, but get get ready. It's pretty awesome. Now, at, <laughs> so what, uh, at what point do you want to show some clips from the game? Do you want to say that to the end, or do you want to show Randy, some of it now? Do? How do you want to do it? Yeah, let, you guys want to see what the game now. looks like? All right. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, why don't, let me set it up a little bit. Actually, John, do you want to set it up? John, John's the design director on the game. Do you want to set up what we're going to be looking at? What are we looking at? Um, I think we're looking, what are we looking at? Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, one of the cool things we're going to get to do in the game is we're going to get to re revisit some of the cool locations from the films. If you've seen any of the trailers or videos that we've put out so far, like most of the things that we've shown so far have been all about action and combat and heavy duty, like hardcore, you know, gameplay. One of the reasons why we wanted to show you this is because if you love the Alien films, Aliens, Alien, Alien 3, there's also a lot of tension and suspense. And some of the fun of being in the boots of these Marines is not always having an alien in your face that you're trying to shoot and that's trying to kill you, but feeling that, that sense of exploration and that discovery. Uh, and one of the funnest things about working on this game and playing it is you're like in the movie and you control the camera, which means you can... It's like you're a virtual tourist almost in these sets that have been so meaningful to us if we've watched and loved the films. And, uh, and we wanted to kind of show some of that as well in, in this environment. I know you guys have seen some of the trailers and you can look that up online if you haven't and see plenty of action and other kinds of gameplay. So this is actually something I wanted to ask yeah. John about. And I think it's interesting that that clip, while it's really cool and it, it's really suspenseful, but you know, there's, there's th they have a, I think we have another clip to show that's more, much more action packed. But you know, this of course was the genius of, uh, of the original Aliens. You know, it was, it was so suspenseful waiting for something to happen. And I wanted to ask you from a, from a game design perspective, how do you find that, that balance between, like people, you pick up a controller, a first person shooter, they expect to shoot stuff, but you also want to give them that, that tension and that suspense. How do you approach that for, as a designer? Well, we've got a couple of really cool things going for us, right? Because we're working in the Aliens universe, right? So we've got the tools available to us. We've got, you know, all of the weaponry and all that kind of stuff. We can t do high action like nobody's business, right? You're shooting guys with a smart gun, <laughs> you know, that's really pretty awesome. Uh, pulse rifles, this kind of stuff. But then we have the idea, we've got the motion tracker, right? Motion tracker, thank you James Cameron for designing such a great gameplay mechanic for me. I appreciate it. Um, tension, right? I mean, you can't have something that's just, you know, running at a nine the whole time and then expect to turn it up to 10 and have anybody notice. So we've got to have those, those elements of building of tension and, and asking those questions of what's coming, you know, that kind of stuff. 
um, so that when the action does come, then it's holy crap, you know, and it really makes an impact on you. So um, we're, we've got all of the tools available to us, and we're really working with those to present something that's really cool. The other aspect that we get to do, uh, as Mikey's mentioned, um, and and uh, Randy's mentioned as well, is we're doing the sequel to the Aliens film in a game form, which means it's not going to be a two-hour experience. We've got 10-plus hours to play with in this universe and play with the ride that we're going to present you guys. So there's going to be a huge variety of stuff that you're going to be exposed to of high action, big, huge, giant, epic moments. And those is then those kinds of things where it's like, you're really freaking scared. You know, turn the lights back on, you know, because you're moving through these areas and it's like, where's the attack going to come from? What's going try What's trying to eat me next? You know, that kind of thing. So uh, it's a heck of a ride, and we're really excited to be able to come here and show you what we're working on, and then, man, I want to get this in your hands and let's play it. So I, <laughs> and I just wanted to ask Mike from a, from a writing perspective. So you're the, you're the story guy. You're the writer. And yeah. I'm, a big, I'm a big advocate of, of, of storytelling in, uh, in games. I worked on the Walking Dead video game series, which is out yeah, right now. Yeah, play episode four? He wrote that one. It's See, awesome. If you're not going to pay me, I'm going to plug my stuff instead. <laughs> This is going to be a sore spot here, I think, this, this enjoy your free trip to New York, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, but in a game like that, I always felt like the first person genre is actually one of the tougher genres. The, the more action heavy the game, the harder it is to kind of weave story into that. How do you, how do you approach getting a, telling a really interesting story in a game like this? Uh, well, we attacked it from a number of directions. I mean, we, we obviously came top down first. Uh, what are, why are we doing this? You know, like why why do we want to uh, attack this in the first place? Because, man, that's it's it's like the best thing ever, but it's also a little scary. Like, okay, now we're now we're the guys carrying the alien torch um, back to where I think. Are you good? You good? <laughs> Just spilling ice all over the equipment. It's fine. No, uh, um, yeah, we wanted to make sure that we found the right, the right promise to fulfill. And, and to us, it was obvious that that promise was Colonial Marines. Um, and the cool thing about Colonial Marines, especially to write them, is that um, men and women are treated exactly the same in combat, uh, which is not a world we live in right now. But in well, the one of the things that Aliens established, I mean, like Vasquez is the most macho character in that movie, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ralston, Ralston talked about her on the set. They would have pull-up contests, and apparently she would just wreck everyone <laughs> all the time but uh yeah i i again like one of the coolest things about them is that that men and women are treated equally because obviously alien comes from a a strong pedi pedigree of of really strong female uh characters um and that was that was really fun to take on i mean I, there was obviously a couple of bits of interesting controversy for a while where where uh we had uh, people petitioning us to put um what was already in the game in the game, and that we didn't want to talk about it for a while, and that actually kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, um, because <laughs> shut up, because uh, Bella, Bella, who's on the, co which by the way, there's a woman marine on the box, and people are at like being like, you need to put women in the game. They're in multiplayer co-op and the the campaign. Like I don't know what else to say. Like they're there, um, and and I'm really proud of the work we did there because Bella. Um, this is not a spoiler because we've been talking about this for a while, but um, her character arc was really interesting. Uh, obviously, in Aliens, there was themes of motherhood, and that was that was really Ripley's arc. So we didn't want to just repeat that. Um, when you meet um, um, Bella, she's already been face huggered, um, but she doesn't know what that means. So, <laughs> so there's still hope there. And uh, the the allegory I wanted to play with was that of cancer. I have lost family members to cancer, so that means a lot to me. But um, it's 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 her determination in the face of likely certain death, you know, um, that that was really really powerful to write and really interesting to do. And I was really proud of that. So that's that's why I say my feelings were hurt. Cause I'm like, that's like the can best we just, we female character I've ever written in my can career. Can we just get an awe for Mike? <laughs> just gonna make him feel a little better. There you go. Hope, that feel, hope you feel better. I d a little bit, yeah, let's go get ice cream, you guys. But this you, is going to be great. You also mentioned another thing that I thought was interesting about the idea that these Marines don't know what they're getting into. Because you're right, these, this new battalion of Marines, this is all new to them. They, they don't know what a face hugger is. They don't know what a, a, a xenomorph is. But it's all stuff that, that we know from obviously having seen the movie. So, so as a writer, you can presumably have some fun with that. I actually wanted to comment on this because you guys just experienced it, right? There's this fun thing that we get to do that's fan service if you've seen the films. But it's just content if you haven't. So, for example, remember just a moment ago when uh, who was playing? Was that Failer that was playing? So when Chris was playing the game, and he picked up that audio recording, 
and was talking about like, oh, we need to get off of this planet, and we can't, can you send money, mom? Uh, and then you hear the, her daughter interrupt her, and she, and she says, uh, it's okay, Newt. And you're like, oh, shit, right? Like, because we know if you've seen the films, you know who the Newt character is. And uh, that, I like that approach to the fan service, where if you did not see the films, it's cool content. You're learning something about the situation that these that these, um, uh, these, these people that survived this, or didn't survive this situation on the Hadley's Hope, you're learning something about that. Um, and, but you're also, uh, if, if you have not seen the films, you're consuming that the same way that the actual characters in the game consume it, because they do not know. That Marine does not know who Newt is, the Marine that picked that up. But as an audience member, if you've seen the film, you do. And, and playing with that sort of dissonance between those different entry points. Do you know the information or you don't? And making it work for all minds was a trick. And Mikey did it brilliantly, if I could, if I could congratulate you on that. I, there, it was funny. I, it was, there's moments in your career where you, where you I, if you experience success, and, and I, I feel like I have a gearbox that I know, I'm, I'm sure you feel like you have as, as your career as a writer. Uh, oddly enough, the best compliment anyone's ever given me um, was after Randy read the script for this, the first draft, he was, he, he was like, Mikey, you made Alien 3 better. And I was like, <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> true. a weird thing to say. It's but true. It I, I really loved Alien 3, but I didn't like, I liked it as a movie. I, you know, it was David Fincher's first film that he directed. I didn't like it as a sequel to Aliens, but I loved it as a, like if it was a standalone movie. But after what you, what your script, yeah. I love Alien 3 now. And I, I, I was, was like, I, uh, part I of me was a, that was sort of part the, of me was yeah. a little resentful of what they, what what Alien Three didn't do that I wished it did, but now that your script exists, like I actually love that. It's like I, I'd be sad if it wasn't the way it was, but but they're not there yet, so they'll have to play the game to find that. I gotta be, I gotta be a, a, a geek for one second because I'm sure you you're gonna hear this on message boards if not now then later because I noticed this in the clip. Why do those pulse rifles only hold 40 rounds a clip? Isn't that supposed to be 99? What's going on there? John. John. <coughs> uh, this is the Mark II pulse rifle, so it's a little bit different from the I one in the it. film. Um, you do get the opportunity to get the original pulse rifle from the film um, as you're going through the game. So uh, you'll have the 90, and it's actually 95. Uh, if you're loaded to 99, it uh, actually tends to jam, and so we only go to 95. It's an important All right, it's good to know. You know, differentiation there. Do you want to um, talk about multiplayer real quick since you mentioned it? We've got it. And you get to play aliens, right? That's, that's the part I want to hear. You can play aliens against the Marines. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's asymmetric. You know, you get to play aliens against the, uh, the Marines and uh, back and forth that way. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. Um, we're liking it. Uh, awesome. It's awesome. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to watch people play because we've had play test. We play test every day with the group in the, on the team, but then we also bring people from the outside in and we just hand them controllers and we say, okay, hey, here's a game. Go play it. And uh, it's interesting to watch their mannerisms as they go through. They've, usually when you're playing a Marine, you start playing it like any shooter, and uh, people start getting owned. They start getting taken out by the, by the Xenos. And they discover that if they don't stick together, if you don't stick together like you do as a Marine, group of Marines, you're going to get owned. You're going to get taken out. So people just naturally start bunching up together, covering each other's backs, working as a team. You'll have one guy that's got the tracker out, and he's calling out targets while the other guys are taking them out while you're trying to get to your destination. Um, that kind of stuff, which is pretty exciting. And then a similar thing happens when you hand the controller to someone playing the Xenomorphs. It's like, hey, go play this game. And you don't really give them any setup. And so they'll initially start to play a little bit like a, uh, a normal shooter. But then once again, they'll, they'll realize that you know, running space first into all of the bullets is not going to be the best strategy um, as a Xenomorph. And so they actually start taking the role of the characters from the game, which is pretty cool. So you start setting up ambushes and you start using your environment a lot more and just trying to split the Marines up so that you can take out the stragglers and that kind of stuff. So I think it's working. People are enjoying it a lot. Um, they're strategizing right on the, f on the fly together, working as teams and stuff to uh, you know, be successful with it. And we're getting really great feedback. So I think it's going to be cool. I just noticed Mikey's confident that it's going to be cool. <laughs> so. I just noticed there's a lady Robocop in the third row. That is so cool. I love Comic Con. <laughs> it's just awesome. Um, I, I kind of want to see something get shot. Does anyone, right? <laughs> We've only got we've only got ten minutes left, but I know you've got. The, do you want to do you want to show some of the Salako stuff? Um, Gary, I I hate to break this to you, but I don't think we actually have that. No, one. Yeah. <laughs> I should have told. We, we should have talked before this, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Um, one thing we can do though, since we do have ten minutes left, if uh, anyone has any questions. Yeah. Who has um, a question? Yeah. 
Oh, how is how are you? All right, we this guy this? right here in the second row in the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you Play secure that shit. Secure that shit, Hudson. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, people with children. Guy in here, fourth row. Did you introduce any new species Monkey? of alien? <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's there's you actually talk about that. <laughs> so would you? When you think about, he asked, did we introduce any new species of alien? And when you, when you, one of the things that you kind of start to understand when you see the second film is uh, Cameron kind of drew from insects, right? Like the idea that there's a queen in the hive and uh, there's, there's some I properties of certain insect species, which is really interesting, where a larva can kind of become anything and what it becomes depends on what's already in the colony. Now, in the films, we saw like the typical kind of hunting kind of alien that goes out and deals with things. But you can imagine that there's got to be other things. Like, what's building all of that incrustation, for example? And, and what's laying the eggs? Well, we discovered what that is. But there's other roles in the colony as well. And uh, some of the uh, eggs and the embryos and the, the chest bursts will grow into different things. And we had fun exploring that. We imagined what kind of aliens can actually, you know, project goo out to build uh, to build the stuff, like maybe things that can spit stuff out or, or eject stuff from their bodies. And how can this is getting kind of hot? How, <laughs> how can that how could that be used as in a combat situation? How could that be used in gameplay? Um, we imagined other rules. There's this one that we created that uh, we call the cr the Marines call the Crusher, and it's got a giant thick carapace on its head almost looks like a, 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 a triceratops and it's so thick that you know small arms fire can't even penetrate its head and it and it tends to rush at you and cr try to you know it's a burrower it digs and, and and you know makes makes passages and stuff but but it'll smash you like a bull uh, and and it, we, we so we had a lot of fun introducing these things and playing with the different species that we already know about from the movies who else has a question uh, guy in the hoodie right there yeah yep Are you doing a Wii U version? Yes. Yeah, so he's asking about the Wii U version of the game. So when, when Aliens Colonial Marines launches on September, Septem uh, sorry, February 12th, I'm like, September, sep February. <laughs> um, you need to sleep, dude. Fe February. September. September. February 12th, uh, when Aliens Colonial Marines launches, it will come on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 and Windows PC, and it will also be on the new... Uh, upcoming Nintendo Wii U platform. No, I'm no game designer, but I'm instantly thinking motion track. Right, and when Nintendo first briefed us on this platform, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're aware of the Wii U yet, but it's it's got first of all, it's got the best controller Nintendo's ever made for playing FPSs. It's got real sticks and triggers, and it has a screen there, which means holy crap, I have an actual motion tracker in my lap, and oh wow, I can use the map that Hudson used. With and my it has a speaker, right? So it'll actually That's make right. that sound. That's right. It's yep. got a speaker. It's got a camera. It's an awesome controller. So if you are one of those early adopter types that wants to get the new platform when it appears, you might consider the uh, Wii U version of the game. It's going to be awesome. All right, good time for a couple more. Uh, lady here in the striped shirt. How do you um, stop people finding other kills? That kind of stuff. So you're working as a team. That's one of the things we want to try to promote with it is that you're working as a team. So it's yeah. The the game prioritizes the objective, the team win over individual performance. Anyone else? Guy in the Maria, uh, military outfit there. Yeah. His name's Lance, by the way, not Bishop. Hey guys. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Yeah. Did I? Quite a few, but but Jim asked me before. Do, do you you ever kind of casually went? You, you get claustrophobia or anything like that? And I go, I go, no, not that I know. Of. Until they put me in that pipe, and then I went. <laughs> I said, <laughs> and I said, realize I got to keep scuttling along here, man. Yeah. Oh, cool. Are you trying to sneak in a second question, dude? I'm watching you. Refill? Uh, many, many, many times. It took a week, and oh yeah, to shoot that little section in there. And you told me also in that pipe, they really were welding that with the cutting tool. They were right? welding it behind me, and a thing was filling with smoke. That was real. Yeah, 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 that was. That's awesome. <laughs> James Cameron! Yeah, baby. Yeah, but yeah. Hey, listen. Method stunts. It, it was fun. All right, let's get one from the, kind of in the back. Go in the baseball hat. You got to speak up. The Nostromo? Uh, the no oh, the, the derelict. derelict. Oh, the space jockey? 
How much can we say about I'll, it? I'll, d I'll just do it. Yeah. He asked, will the Colonial Marines in this game discover the ship from the original alien, that, that derelict ship where the eggs were first discovered? We don't know it wasn't a ship. Or was. Well, we kind of Prometheus. know. Prometheus shows us what it is now. Yeah. Uh, the answer is... <laughs> The answer is yes. The an that, is, that is about a thousand kilometers away from Hadley's Hope, and things culminate there. You will be in that space jockey chamber. Ooh. You can go, you will be in there, and it's you're in control, so look around. Look around. Uh, I, think, I think Drake has to get a question. It's uh, twofold, actually. I mean, um, there was the issue of understanding where you're going and what you're doing and that kind of thing. So we, oh, I'm sorry. The, the question was, you know, the, the choice to go to a third person when you're playing as a xenomorph um, over being in first person. And we did it for two reasons. One of them was being in first person is very disorienting, we were finding. Um, you've, se you've seen it in the other games. It's pretty cool, but it's, it's really disorienting. And so we went with a fixed camera, um, third person perspective. And then uh, the other aspect of it that we get is awesome. You get to see how cool your Xeno is that you're controlling moving through the environment. You get to see the cool kills and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's badass. John, you say moving through the environment, but the Xenomorphs, when you control them, you can climb on walls, you can climb on ceilings, you can sneak through all these little tiny crevices and do what the aliens can do in the movie. So in addition to having a better, more natural kind of perspective on that movement uh, from the third person point of view when you're playing as a xenomorph, you also get to see all that animation and all of those behaviors taking place as you're controlling them. And it's, it's awesome to control an alien. Like I, I've never really felt like I've done that effectively until... All right, until time for game. one, maybe two more. Uh, guy waving his hat in the back there. Speak up! Any other titles? No, actually. Yeah, yeah originally... When Aliens, Electric, when the, Boogaloo? When the, when, the deal was first, when the deal was first signed, we hadn't even written the first line of code yet, and 20th Century Fox and Sega were so excited that the project was actually going to happen, they immediately put out a press release. And if you go back and you read that press release, it says something like, Gearbox is going to make a game in the Alien universe. Like, it doesn't even have a title yet. Uh, for us, the fantasy was always to be one of the Colonial Marines and want to expand on that part of the universe, uh, to use that entry point that we talked about earlier. Uh, and, 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 and given that, it felt like this is the right title for the game. Let's, it is Aliens pure aliens fiction. It's not the what if scenario, what if predators were part of the world. It's the pure aliens canon and it is colonial marines focused. I don't see anyone waving me off yet, so I'm just going to keep going until they Do tell it. me to stop. Oh, there uh, is. In the very back there, was that Naruto in the back? We have one minute. All right, That's go ahead. Last Speak up. Yeah, I might eat you. What is that about the alien yeah. tongue? I didn't hear what he... What? What was the other thing you said? Uh -huh. He wants a picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the correct canonical term for that little thing that's inside of the mouth of an alien is little mouth. <laughs> that's, it's true. <laughs> And yeah, if you want to, if you want to take pictures of us, that's fine. And right, I so mean, we're gonna have to get out of here. Uh, yeah, right, soon, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. Um, Thank you guys so much. Go ahead. I uh, I just want to mention Lance Henriksen is cooler even than you think. He wrote a comic book. Yep. Uh, like, do you want to take an option to put, to pimp that real quick? It's coming out in the December. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, t uh, twelve, twelve, twelve. It's coming out. It's called To Hell You Ride. From Dark Horse, right? From Dark Horse. Is it Horse here Comics. at the convention? Do you know? Yeah, they're here. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll and, go check it out. Uh, Tom Mandrake does the art, and Joe Madry and I are writing it. So very cool, very cool. Five comics. All right, so I want to give it up for Gearbox and for Lance Henriksen. Yeah.